How to pose underwater as a mermaid. Over the course of the last four and a half, five years of being a professional mermaid, I've gotten a ton of questions and I do a lot of Q and A's and those are great, but a lot of the questions you kind of need to show to answer. And one of the biggest questions I get is how to pose underwater as a mermaid. So today I'm going to be giving you guys all of my tips and tricks to pose underwater, to be graceful, to keep a natural face, to sink, to swim. And I'm going to be showing you my footage shooting underwater with photo and video and other underwater photographers and what I look like behind the scenes on an actual photo shoot. When getting ready for a photo shoot, the first thing that I suggest is getting your mind right. Meditation, relaxation, just let it go. Let it all go, pull it all off your shoulders and get in a really good space. So right before the photo shoot, maybe do a meditation, do some breathing, do some yoga, do some stretching and just get your mind right. Once you enter the water, make sure that you feel comfortable. Make sure that your fin's not too tight, that the tail you're modeling isn't too big. These are all things that are really gonna affect your performance. So we wanna make sure that we're in a good place. I'll also say, I highly suggest you don't eat before a photo shoot. The more food you eat, especially dairy, the less you're gonna be able to hold your breath. So if you do your dive on a nice empty stomach and you stretch and you're loose and you got your mind right and you meditated, I promise you are gonna have a way better time in the water. So we have a couple different types of dives. We have an inhale dive where we fill our bodies with air and then we dive. An exhale dive where we push all the air out and then we dive. And then the other thing you can do is you can dive with weights. There are so many different types of poses that you can do underwater. The trick here is to not try to pose on your way down. Unless you have a very specific shot in mind, like a dive down shot. We want to wait until our up, when we're coming back up to the surface, that's when we want to pose. And the key here is to let yourself naturally rise. You are going to, if you inhaled to dive down, you're going to float up. So this allows you to move around, look beautiful, hit a bunch of poses on your way up, and then come up and take a breath. This is great for so many different types of posing. It's wonderful for dive down and then look up. This gives you the nice straight body. You can do some stuff on your side. You can do a barrel roll. There's all kinds of fun movements you can do if you're posing on your way up. Now the reverse of that is an exhale dive. Please make sure you have a safety spotter when you're, when you're working underwater, especially in a mermaid tail. Now this is going to be where we let all of our air out. Well, why would we let all of our air out to go underwater? To sink. I, if you don't know me, have a booty. It's a floaty booty. For an exhale dive, you don't have to push it all out. It depends on the pose that you're going for. So if you want to reach the bottom and you want to reach it fast, then you want to push all your air out. If you only need to bob a foot or two underneath of the surface, then only let out like 10 or 20% at a time. I'm going to do a pretty knee pose, which is one of my favorite poses. It's very elegant. It's where we go like we're going to sit on our heels and we kneel down, but we're in the water. Usually for me, if I kneel, I always cross. I either do a lower body cross or an upper body cross. And I'm just going to let out about 15, 20% of my air. So I get ready, I breathe up, and then I go. This will allow me to just sink below the surface. It's amazing when you start playing with your air capacity, how much control you have over it. Another great exhale dive pose is the side pose, which is where we're just gonna fall on our side. And the objective here is for the fluke to be facing the camera. We wanna see a beautiful horizontal side profile. I wanna make sure that I keep my hips stacked, facing down to the ground, tail out, and I get a perfect side profile 
facing front. And then from here, I can play with my arms. A really beautiful move when you are doing a side shot is to extend your hand up like you're touching the surface. You can look up look down, look sideways. If you don't want bubbles to come out of your nose and you don't want to fill up your sinuses, try to keep your nose tilted as far down to the ground as possible. The more you tilt it up to the sky, the more the water is going to come in. This does happen. It does hurt a little bit. It's actually not bad. It just kind of cleans your nose out. Uh, and we do do it knowing it's going to suck but it can result in some really beautiful images like the back pose. This is where we floating on our backs and then we drop down underwater. And then when you're ready, when you found yourself in a good balance, then you're gonna just let go, drop your butt a little bit so you make a nice arch and then let your hands hang out. Now we have something called dancer hands, which is where you make something like a beautiful line. And that's where you'll see like really beautiful poses with, with models is that they've actually practiced with their hands, that their hands aren't doing some weird, crazy thing. Like we've all seen like the rogue pinky or, you know, something happening. So be really mindful in all your moves, almost like you're guiding an underwater symphony. We have the push away hands. We have the reach up hands. We have the dancer out hand, which looks kind of like this. Uh, and you can do that same downwards like this. So try to keep your hands in mind. So whenever you drop into these poses, get into the pose, get ready. And then your final move is to set your hands into the spectacular place that they're going to be. Another pose I'm really fond of is what I call the look back pose. There's a lot of different ways you can get into it. The way I like to do it is to exhale, almost like I'm going to do my sitting on, on my tail, but this time I'm tilted upright instead of back like this. Other poses that I like, especially if you are newer to posing underwater, is just the nice swim pose. And it's just as simple as swimming, but pretend you're swimming in slow motion. So just really easy motion. Try not to bend your knees as much as possible, all in the hips and all in the heels. That's what I always say. And you're just going to glide past the photographer. Once you get towards their camera, you can actually even just stop swimming and let your body naturally glide. And this is where my hand, I usually do like a hand like this, like a push back hand and I'll just kind of glide past and I'll look at the camera. I'll look forward, look a couple different directions. And that's going to give you that beautiful classic side profile shot. Another one of my favorite, which is what I would consider a harder move is the ones where you have your fluke completely above your head and you're being shot straight on. So there is a trick to getting your fluke behind you. And it's just a very specific body motion. And you'll see in this video, I'm going to swim towards the camera and then I'm going to stop and then you'll watch my knees, my butt and my heels and I'll make almost like this pumping motion. And by doing that, it'll put my fluke above my head. My face is forefront, my hair is out of my face and I can rock a really cool pose. One of the most classic poses is just a simple straight drop down. You can do this by just letting out some of your air and just literally sinking below the surface. And the more air you let out, the deeper you're going to sink. So if you did want to reach up and touch the surface, you'd want to let more air out and just keep your body straight. Try to make sure your toes are always in line with the rest of your body so that your fluke is out. And this just makes such a grand and beautiful classic front mermaid silhouette and it's actually a very easy one to achieve but keep in mind that the more movement you have the more bubbles the more chance of stirring things up the more hair all over the place the more facial expressions you might have so keeping your movements really controlled having full knowledge of what it is you want your body to do and keeping that ability to rest and have a breathe up and then reset and repose will give you really beautiful outcomes. I hope that some of these tips help you guys as you continue on your underwater modeling or mermaid journeys. Everything that I've talked about today can absolutely be applied to just human modeling as well. And it's always a lot of fun. If you do use any of these tips in your next shoot, please tag me. I would absolutely love to see how you do. 
And if there's another video you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. As always, make sure you guys are subscribing to my YouTube channel. I put out weekly videos and you can find me at Vero Beach Mermaid and at Brandy Anthony on all major social medias. Until next time, I will see you and enjoy the water.